what does it mean that the Bible is inspired? I mean, does it mean when people say the Bible is inspired, do they really mean that the Bible is inspirational? Well, there's a difference between those two. So God's communication and God communicate with us in a very special and patient manner. You know, when the Apostle Paul said that all scripture was inspired by God in 2 Timothy 3.16, he did not mean that the Bible was merely an inspirational book. He didn't mean inspirational. In fact, he used a very specific Greek word called Theophoneutos, which literally means God breath. And what Paul then is trying to say is that the written words in the Bible are from God. That's why we we refer to the scripture as the word of God. Even Jesus referred to scripture, which is, of course, from the Old Testament. And this way, when he told the Pharisees that they were misusing scriptural teaching, basically, Jesus was saying that, you know, you cancel the word of God, which is scripture, for the sake of your own tradition. This was in Matthew 15, 6. The Apostle Paul, when he talked to the Pharisee, he was trying to explain to them and trying to explain how the Jewish people and who have been entrusted with the word, the very words of God. So when you read the Bible, you being the Jewish people are not simply reading an inspirational book. He's saying you are reading God's word from God's mouth. Now, while scripture is from God's word. It doesn't mean that God actually penned the words himself or put people into a trance or, and then they would use their hands and pen it down and pen all God's thought down, if you like. Rather, God chose special people who had a spiritual relationship with him to be his spokesman. And God spoke through them to write down his words and message through the unique personalities of each of those selected messengers. For example, Moses, God spoke directly to him. Moses relayed God's word to the children of Israel verbally and in writing. You see that in Exodus 19, 20 and 24. And Moses later told the Israelites that the Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me. And this is Joseph saying like me. The Lord said to me now joseph was saying he had a direct communication with the lord he said i will put my words in his mouth and he will tell the people uh, his mouth being moses mouth and tell the people everything i being god have commanded him this is in deuteronomy 8 chapter 18 verse 15 17 and 18 see some prophets do hear audibly from god well, while others receive God's words, perhaps through dreams and maybe through a burning bush or some visions or from angels or through an inner voice as the word of the Lord that came to Hosea and to Joel and so on. So God communicates with his messengers in various ways. So when it is said that scripture is inspired by God, it means It is super intended that he wanted to be what he wanted to say, rather, and what he wanted to say through men, using men or messengers as his instruments. In fact, Paul said, when we tell you these things, we do not use words that are from human wisdom. And Paul continues, instead, we speak words given to us by the Spirit using the Spirit's words to explain spiritual truths. And you can find this in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 13. And similarly, Peter made the same point when he wrote that, quote, no prophecy in Scripture ever came from the prophet's own understanding or from human initiative. No, these prophets were moved by the Holy Spirit and they spoke from God.
unquote. It is found in Second Peter verse, uh, chapter 1, verse 20 to 21. Over thousands of times, the biblical writers claim to have received their words from God. And they use, you can tell it by, they use phrase, phrase, phrases like, the word of the Lord came to me. That's what Ezekiel said. And in Leviticus, Moses said, the Lord said, uh, in Leviticus, it says, the Lord said to Moses. And in Isaiah, Isaiah said, says the Lord. And Jeremiah says, declares the Lord. And so on. The Apostle Paul said, I want you to understand that the gospel message I preach is not based on mere human reasoning. And Paul continues to say, I receive my messages or my message from no human source and no one taught me. Instead, I received it by direct revelation from Jesus Christ. Unquote. You can find it in Galatians chapter 1, verse 11 to 12. So, Scripture then was inspired by God so that he could reveal his thoughts and his words and his promises in order that we, being us, you and I, could have them preserved for generations to come. So the Bible is a special revelation from God or of God. They are written by human authors, but who were inspired directly by God. And because of that, the Bible carries certain power and weight, or what we might call the Bible carries an authority. Because this authority Behind this scripture stands the authority and the sovereignty of God of the universe. And when he speaks, his word defines the essence of his authority. Throughout antiqu antiquity and throughout thousands of years, God had, had took special care to reveal his words to select individuals who would carefully write down his thoughts and message. And he superintended that this process so that he wanted to have it written, for in fact, was written correctly. And we have the permanent record in Scripture. As Jesus said, I tell you the truth, I quote, I tell you the truth until heaven and earth disappear, not even the smallest detail of God's law will disappear until its purpose is achieved, close quote. You can find this in Matthew 5, Matthew chapter 5, verse 18. Nothing will stamp out God's word, what he's saying, and nothing will impede his ultimate purpose until it is done. Quote from Matthew chapter 24, 35, before I finish. Heaven and earth will disappear, but my words will remain forever. Amen. There are about 40 odd authors of the 66 books of the Bible. And the people who wrote these books were not mindless dictation machines. God specifically selected specific and special human authors with various backgrounds and different talents, with different educational training and varied or varied life experiences for a very good reason. God being infinite wanted his word to communicate clearly to all finite humans. So he transmitted his thoughts and words through different humans with different personalities, different styles, different voices, and different walks of life. Because each person contributes uniquely, contributes their human experience to enabling them to convey a tapestry of meanings we could all understand. Let's look at some examples of God's servants. Take King David, for instance. King David started up to be out to be a humble shepherd. He killed a giant. He was a musician, had his life threatened by King Saul. And then David himself later became king. Then he, his downturn, he committed adultery. He fought and won wars and so on. David knew what it meant to have ups and downs in life. And God used this multifaceted human experience to powerfully communicate his word. Now, David 
God knew David had a tender heart of devotion. David's desire to serve, his failings and, and sin, and his deep passion to know God intimately. And then there was King Solomon, who was gifted with insight and wisdom of God, and God chose to speak through him. Then it was Hosea, the prophet Hosea, who was, had an unhappy marriage to an unfaithful wife, and God chose him and spoke through him. Because Hosea's life experiences could illustrate the unfaithfulness of Israel and God's unfailing and, unf- and faithful love to his people. The outspoken and overconfident Peter actually denied Jesus. But yet Peter's first letter, the book of First Peter, we have one of the greatest messages ever written on, an, on how to maintain a life of devotion and holiness in the midst of temptation and suffering. As with multiple musical instruments in an orchestra, God made one of the many and varied human experiences of his spokesman to craft what he wanted us to know in words that would enable us to clearly understand his heart and his soul. Not only did God spoke through different messengers and with varied human experiences, he also expressed his word in a number of literary styles and forms. I mean, at times the Bible reads like a novel. And at times, it, at times it reads like a book of rules and regulation. The scripture moves from a mournful lament of Jeremiah to the exalted poetry of Isaiah and the Psalms. The Bible uses a wide range of literary forms to communicate clearly to its human audience. God's word is full of narratives and parables and allegories and metaphors and simple illustrations, satire, and hyperbole. In doing so, and in communicating in this way, God then captures the full characters of those he spoke through. The scripture, therefore, is textured with varied literary forms and styles. And the different human perspective and emotions and cultures of God's messengers. And in, in so, God communicated and he captures the full character of those he spoke through from the tight-knit logic of a scholar like Paul to the priestly perspective of a theologian, the writer of Hebrew, and to a poetic talents of a musician, David in the Psalms, to the despair and agony of a people, Jeremiah. See, each book of the scripture is presented through the lens of its human spokesman yet still conveys the exact message of God who wants us to receive that message. So in one respect, we can say the Bible is a product of both God and humans, but its writing was supernaturally guided and divinely superintended to convey precisely what God wants to communicate. Therefore, it is rightly called the Word of God. 